It's day number nine of Craftmas, and in this episode, we are making our very own snow globe tumbler with the help of a cricket. So uh, let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael. This is Mr. Crafty Pants, and it is another day where we are diving into the Craftmas Ultimate Mega Mystery Box. If y'all got your hands on one of these, y'all know it is cram packed. It is full of not only amazing projects, fun projects, but also tons and tons and tons of materials. Y'all got plenty of options, as well as plenty of blanks and even some exclusive SVG cut files and designs for sublimation or however you wanna use those. So with that being said, we are gonna be using this snow globe tumbler that came inside of the ultimate mega mystery box. This little guy right here. Now, if you've seen these snow globe tumblers before, you know how freaking amazing they are as well. This is actually a glass, like almost like the little beer king glass style, but um, much bigger, much taller. And it actually has a pre-drilled hole. You may have seen these done with like Starbucks, like acrylic tumblers, like the plastic tumblers, gorgeous. But here they are in the glass form and it does have a little hole that's already like formed into the bottom of it. You can, if you'd like, make up a mixture to go inside of this. It's not mandatory. You do you boo, whatever floats your boat, whatever tickles your pickle. What I do in these videos is just kind of showing you what I would do with these projects. You take that and you run with it and you do whatever you will with that because ultimately this is all about you doing something that, that basically you like and also fits your style. But if you do wanna make up a mixture for this, basically you would just need some vegetable glycerin. I'm also gonna be using some distilled water and I'm even gonna be using, and again, this is even like extra optional. Most people would just use like the vegetable glycerin, distilled water. I'm gonna throw in a little bit, not much, of this clear Elmer's glue right here. We are also gonna be using some glitter, a custom glitter that I'm, I created with some of these StarCraft glitters. Um, love, love, love that. And we will also be using some silicone. I'm actually using this advanced silicone right here. Or you could even use like UV resin. You do you boo. All right, so from there, let's go ahead and show you uh, the design that we're using for this. I created this nutcracker wrap for the, the tumbler, and it should go ahead and come into Cricut Design Space at the exact size that you all need for this tumbler. However, double check it. Cricut Design Space can be a little weird, a little unreliable sometimes, a little wonky. So just make sure that it did come in at 7.25 inches tall and 9.36 inches wide. If it didn't, you can come up here and just change it to be those, those dimensions right up here at the top. As far as the materials that we're using, let me show you that as well because I am always about the StarCraft HD. So many people have asked questions like, is it even worth it? Like it, it's so inexpensive, it's so affordable. There's no way that this stuff can actually be good. And the fact of the matter is it is beyond your wildest imagination. Like so much better than what most people expect it to be, especially for the price. Like this stuff, in my opinion, beats out like the name brand hand over fist. Like it's so good. And I mean, you can get like a 12 inch by five foot roll of it for $2.85, a five foot roll for $2.85. Plus you could also use like my discount affiliate code if you want to, it's crafty, just C-R-A-F-T-Y. It'll save you money on your order from 143vinyl.com. It will also help support this channel at the exact same time. You don't have to use it, but if you wanna save some money, you can. So we are using the StarCraft HD for this. This did come in the ultimate mega mystery box as well. Again, I gave y'all plenty of options. I even tried to include like different types of, or different color skin tones basically, um, just kind of show you all, because I really want everybody to be as represented as humanly possible. They only have so many colors that could be represented with skin tones. So I did what I could in that, in that department. I'm hoping that they release more more colors that could also be used for skin tones in the future. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started cutting with this. Let's go ahead and come up here to the top, click on make it. And this is just like the map preview screen. It's just showing you how everything's gonna be cutting out. So here are all the layers. We don't need to do anything with this. Like this is just for permanent vinyl. So we don't need to do anything here. Let's go ahead and come down here to the bottom right and click on continue. And for the StarCraft HD, the cut setting I use is either vinyl or you could use the premium vinyl, permanent glossy, or just premium vinyl, if that's the only option your, your Cricut cutting machine has. Normally I would go with just the vinyl or the premium vinyl permanent glossy. 
With that being said, I do already have this all cut out and weeded out and ready to go because really, let's be honest, that part's kind of boring to watch. Let's just get on with the action. Now, I, I did forget to mention the red. The red that I'm using is not the StarCraft HD. It is the Style Tech Luster. Just in case you did not get your hands on one of these boxes, I am including a link to all of these materials down in that description box below in case you're interested. But this does have a little bit of a luster, a, a little bit of a, I don't know, I mean, I would even say somewhat of a lustful, just a, a lustful sheen to it. I, that doesn't even make sense, but it's like so freaking gorgeous. Like hopefully the camera does it. I don't think the camera's gonna do this justice, but it's gorgeous. It's got like a nice, like somewhat semi-metallic reflection to it. Beautiful. But the rest I believe is all gonna be the StarCraft HD. All right, so let me go ahead and grab this snow globe tumbler and you know, we'll go ahead and apply the vinyl down to this first for the video sake, all right? I'll just be completely honest. For me personally, when it comes to filming this, it's gonna be easier for me to go ahead and do the vinyl first and then go in with the glitter solution. For you though, I would honestly recommend going in, doing the glitter solution and everything first and then applying the vinyl. And the only reason for that, you don't have to do it that way, but the only reason I would recommend going that route is just because you don't wanna get like this, this mixture of like the glycerin and everything potentially on the vinyl. Not that it would necessarily ruin it or anything, but it may create somewhat of a little bit of a mess. I'm just putting that out there, do with that whatever you will. So let's go ahead and grab this and we're gonna go ahead and wipe this down with some rubbing alcohol because we really wanna get anything on here that could be left over from the factory, any dirt, oil, any films, anything on here that would prevent our permanent vinyl from getting a really good strong adhesion to that glass. All right, so while that's drying up, let me go ahead and pull out the transfer tape. Now, this in my opinion is like the gold standard for transfer tape. It's my personal favorite. It's the StyleTech Clear Medium Tech transfer tape. Again, you could use like that discount code for this from 143 Vinyl. Now this is like a, a medium tack. It's more of like a light tack to be completely honest. I would say light to medium tack. If you do prefer your transfer tape to have a little bit more of a, a stick to it, a little bit more of a tack to it. The Starcraft is also really good. To me personally, it's just maybe a little bit too sticky for some circumstances. So I usually just end up going with the style tack. Um, this is my personal favorite, but again, you do you, boo. All right, so transfer tape, all cut out. And basically it's just laying out here on the table, the sticky side facing up towards me. And typically what I like to do is go ahead and start out with the largest layer first. This is like 99.9% .9 of cases, I, I start out with the largest layer first. And what I also like to do is with the sticky side facing up for that transfer tape, I have to kind of go in there and lay this down face first onto that. You could do it either way. You could lay the transfer tape onto this. Me personally, I just, I prefer doing it this way. You go ahead and just trim off the excess of this transfer tape. And honestly, I'll just save, I'll save that for future projects. I also have to go ahead and grab my little squeegee tool, burnish down over top of that. And then what I like to do personally is flip it over and then peel the backing paper off of the vinyl and off of the transfer tape. Some people, they don't like the style tech clear medium tech transfer tape because they don't feel like it has enough of a tack to actually lift up and pull the vinyl away from the backing. But what I like to do is actually pull the backing off because it's so much easier regardless of whatever transfer tape you're using, period. All right, so there is that. Now I'm also gonna be using some parchment paper. This is like one of my favorite Cricut hacks ever for applying vinyl. Grab some parchment paper. Some dollar store brands don't work. I just use like the Reynolds Wrap brand. For most cases, um, in my area where I live, we have a Kroger grocery stores and the Kroger brand of the parchment paper also works. So let me go ahead and just kind of pull that out. And basically what you wanna do is cover up most, most of that design, most of that vinyl with that, that parchment paper. So in this case, since we are doing a wrap, I'm basically covering most of it, except for a little bit over here to the edge. So in this case, the left side of this wrap, I'm leaving a little bit exposed. So I'm not completely covering up this entire decal, essentially. That's gonna be so much easier here whenever, and that's just gonna be so much easier when we go to apply this, trust me on that. I'm gonna trim off the excess parchment paper down here. 
and really we should be good to go for this. So I also like to use these little squeegee tools. They come in really handy for just kind of laying this out, like rounded surfaces anyway. Out right like, like so. You know how I said earlier to make sure that this is coming into the Cricut Design Space at the correct size? Apparently whenever I cut this out earlier, it didn't. So let me double check this real quick. Give me one second. Yeah, so whenever I cut this out earlier, apparently it came into Cricut Design Space a little wonky and I didn't cut this out at the right size that it should have been. Leave it to me, leave it to me for that to happen after I just told y'all to make sure it comes in at the right size. Oh well, y'all still get the, the full effect. You'll still get the full picture of how to go about doing all this. So let's go ahead and get this laid out. And then we'll go ahead and grab a little squeegee tool, another squeegee tool. These things are only a couple of bucks. I would pick up a few of them if you haven't. You could also use like gift cards or credit cards, whatever you have laying around. We got that part down. That's why we don't cover up the entire decal with that parchment paper. So we can actually lay it down as needed. And now let's go ahead and lift this up. Remove the parchment paper, and then we can go ahead and start applying this down. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and peel off this transfer tape. You can definitely see that this should have been taller. It's all right. You know what? If it's gonna happen to anyone, I'd much rather it happen to me than to you all so y'all can learn from my mistakes. All right, let's go ahead and lay the transfer tape back out. Now I'm gonna lay this back down. Grab a little squeegee tool, brush down that backing paper, that, that vinyl to that transfer tape, and then peel the backing paper off of this. Again, covering up most of that decal with the parchment paper. And we can then go in here and match this all up because of that parchment paper. For those who may not know, um, I've recently had surgery. I'm still recovering from said surgery and I'm about to go back into surgery here within like the next week or so. Because of that, I am on medication to help with the pain. And I'm gonna blame this on that medication. I don't know if I can truly blame it on the medication or not, but I'm gonna try to blame it on that medication that I was wrong. This was cut out at the right size. I should have started the decal, the red decal up here at the very top because I failed to take into account the black strip at the bottom. This can only happen to me. I mean, again, learn from my mistakes. I'm gonna blame it on the pain medicine, but <laughs> believe what you will, I guess. Oh my gosh. All right, so we got this kind of situated where we want it. Let's go ahead, peel up that vinyl, remove that parchment paper, and then we'll just lay the rest of it down. I'll still cut down the, the black section to kind of fit down perfectly around here. It'll be all right. I just want your alls to be better than mine. All right, so once we got that down, go ahead and peel off that transfer tape. All right, so for this little area, the little black section down here, I'm gonna first trim off the part that's supposed to be his eyeballs. And again, me trimming down this little black part, it's not gonna be an issue for you all because y'all are gonna start your all's red layer up here towards the top of the cup, unlike what I did. I'm honestly just gonna take a guess and just kind of cut this towards like right down the middle. Now for this like single, like single strip, we're gonna be good. I'm just gonna go ahead and just play it down here towards the bottom. I'm not gonna use the parchment paper for this. However, if you want to, you do you boo. There. Not horrible so far, right? I mean, except for the blank space up top. It's fine, it's fine. Y'all's will be so much better than mine. All right, so everything else is basically just like smaller sections. I'm just gonna trim down the same piece of transfer tape. Again, we're using the same transfer tape for all of this. I love this transfer tape, you guys. I'm gonna apply it down over top of the little portion of his jacket. And I'm also gonna trim down some of this parchment paper as well. And now we can kind of go in here and basically match this up where it should go. Once you have it lined up, go ahead and place that one section down, lift up on the transfer tape, remove that parchment paper, and then you can either grab the squeegee or for something this small, sometimes I'll just use my thumb to lay that down. 
And then we'll just repeat that same process for all the other layers as well. Despite riding really hard on the struggle bus with this, it's really freaking cute. Like I'm loving this. So let's go ahead and dive into the actual mixture that we'll be using for the inside of the snow globe tumbler. Now there is probably a million different ways to do a snow globe tumbler, and there's so many different recipes out online. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. So this is for something that is a very flowy, very loose snow globe tumbler that actually looks like a snow globe. I mean, with, with an actual real life snow globe, you have to kind of go in there and kind of shake it up. This will be somewhat similar. So I am actually using this little bottle right here. This came from the Dollar Tree. You can get two of them for like a dollar 25. I'm sure Walmart has these as well. It's basically just a condiment bottle. And I went ahead and mixed up 50% of uh, distilled water with 50% vegetable glycerin. One part vegetable glycerin to one part distilled water. Now what I'm gonna do is actually mix in, I don't, not too much of this clear glue, basically around, probably around a tablespoon or so worth. And then I'm gonna stir it up Gently stir it up. I don't want to cause any bubbles or anything. I just want to squirt this inside real quick. And for something like this, I'm just gonna grab like little wooden sticks, popsicle sticks, really any of that will, will do the trick. And I'm just gonna get that stirred up. And you do want to make sure that this is thoroughly stirred. I'm just gonna hold this up to the light to make sure that there's nothing kind of floating around. It looks like everything is, is stirred in. I think we're good. So I'm gonna put the lid back onto this. And with these little condiment bottles, it just makes it so much easier for filling this up. Now, I'm just gonna kind of put that up in here and I'm gonna just kind of keep angling at this. Basically just kind of get this at an angle where it's all gonna be kind of like flowing down into there. So I think we have enough on there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my, my, little, my little paper towel here with some rubbing alcohol on there and just kind of clean up around there. Anything that kind of squirted out and around the edge. All right, so basically us kind of filling in just a little bit down here at the bottom is really just to make sure that this glitter doesn't clump up and actually get stuck down here around the edge, around the brim, which it can do in some circumstances. So what I'm gonna do now is make sure that this is all extremely clean, extremely dry up here around the top edge of this with some rubbing alcohol. And again, this is all completely optional, y'all. You don't have to do any of this. You can literally put the glitter in here dry and it just be like a dry snow globe type of shaker. You don't have to do the solution. You don't have to do anything. Or you could just leave the glass exactly as it is. You don't have to put anything inside of it. You don't have to do anything. It could just be like a glass water bottle. That is all clean. It's all dry. Let's grab some painter's tape or really any tape will do the trick and then just wrap this around. And what the goal is with this is to dump the glitter down here and basically kind of tap and shake at it to get it all to go down into that little hole. To really help out with this, a massage gun, if you have one, just kind of holding it up here, like the vibration will really, really help out with that. But completely, totally optional. Otherwise you can kind of just tap at this like so. So basically that's how you'd go about doing it with like the tapping method, massage gun method. This one has like a little metal end on the, on the end of it. I would not hold that up against this. I'm just gonna turn this on and hold it up against the side of it. And then just kind of tilt all the glitter to where it's gonna go down into that hole. And I know that's a little difficult to see with this camera angle. I'm trying to get the camera angle, but it works so much better if you do have vibration. Again, vibration is not necessary though. Again, you could just tap it. All right, and so then for the rest of the glitter that's kind of uh, on the top of the glass here, but it's not really wanting to go inside of that hole, you could just kind of tap and push it over into that hole or grab like a little dry paintbrush and kind of push it down in there that way as well. All right, so once you have that all knocked in and like the top cleaned off and everything, you can kind of go back to your little mixture, your little solution, and we're gonna finish this off. And you don't wanna push this too fast because it will kind of squirt out around the edge. You just kind of wanna like let it drip a little bit and then occasionally just put a little bit of a squeeze on there. All right, so I filled this most of the way to the top 
and I am leaving a little bit of space at the top as well. But what I'm really wanting this to do is what they call like off gassing. It's not really the right term for it, but basically what it's meant by it is letting any of the air that's maybe stuck in some of this glitter kind of pull up and, and shake loose out of this cup. So before we seal it, we want it to do all that where we kind of get all of the air bubbles and everything out so that basically we can kind of fill this up as close to the top as possible without actually getting that mixture up there to the brim of that hole. We do want there to be a little bit of air in there when it's all said and done, just not a ton. So basically what I'm gonna do is leave this overnight and honestly give it around 24 hours or so. Then we'll come in, top it off with a little bit more of the solution and then clean it up and then seal it with that silicone or UV resin, whatever you decide to use. All right, so once I've given that around 24 hours, I'm just going in here now and filling this up to the top, just leaving a small little air bubble, not wanting to really take it all the way up to the brim. Once I've done that, I wanna make sure that this is all completely cleaned off with some rubbing alcohol. And once it is completely dry, I'm gonna go in here with some of this silicone, just lay it in there inside of that hole, smooth it across the top, and then let that completely set up for at least an hour or two. From there, we are completely done. And as far as care instructions for this, do not put it in the dishwasher and hand wash only. Hey, thank you so much for watching this special Craftmas episode. Don't forget to stamp that subscribe button and also ring that little bell for all the notifications so that y'all don't miss out on a single cricket or crafty minute. I love y'all to the freaking moon and back and until next time, stay crafty.